you know this is wrestling in the 1980s because Tully Blanchard, pictured lounging by his limo with a um, a sort of plum jacket, one of those cut bolero type things, if I remember rightly, or is it a double breasted, one of the two, and a white scarf, is after his perfect ten. Been looking for this for the last week or so. And this is Mid Atlantic Wrestling, the major leagues of professional wrestling. Don Coddle with a beard this week. That's actually one of the most exciting things about this week's programme, really, which is a shame, isn't it? And um, it's from, let me get this date correct, 26th of um, January 1985. Yeah, Chicago Bears. That was 85, wasn't it? I think it was. Well, we start off with Ron Bass, who is the Mid-Atlantic champion, isn't he? Versus Denny Brown, who is a junior champion. So it's the um, it's the battle of the belts. It's not though. There are no belts on the on the. No belts are um, are to be won or lost here in this match. It's all right. You've got Denny Brown who's trying desperately to to you know use his his speed because he's smaller than Bass who who instantly throws him off. There's an arm drag though from Denny Brown uh, and an arm bar uh, as Don Coddle said, still with the arm bar. Yep, it, it, I mean, I mean, he uses that sucker quite a lot. Big crossbody. Um, um, Ron Bass suddenly talks to J.J. Dillon. As if he said, I need to get a bit of advice, actually, J.J. He's a bit too fast for me. Well, you, you use your use your power. My power. I never thought of that. For instance, so then there's um, he gets a back elbow, or an elbow to the back of the head, should I say, uh, a headlock, which is nicely worked, then a back elbow, uh, and, and an atomic drop. Which Brown doesn't half sell. Really does. Some Brown punches. JJ looks a bit worried at this point. Selling nicely. But then Brown runs into a boot. And Bass gets the power slam for the pin. And there was really no point. Ladies and gentlemen, Follocks, there was no point to that. Now, one of the other items about this is that is that every time you have a break. And there are quite a lot because it's American TV, folks. Magnum TA is there. They're really bigging him up. We're going to show you a picture of Magnum TV, uh, TA or Magnum TV even. And here he is riding his, his motorcycle. What kind of motorcycle does Magnum TA have? Is it a Harley? Yeah, inevitably. Of course it is. And um, he's in, by the way, to have a chat now. He, he dislikes Wahoo. You know why? He wants that belt. So he will dislike him because he's not going to say, I really like you and I don't really want to fight you, but I want that belt. It happens sometimes in wrestling, but not very often, folks. Now, Don Canoodle or Canoodle is now uh, Canoodle. Canoodle. I say Canoodle. You say Canoodle. Let's call the whole thing off, please, because this wasn't a very good match, to be honest. He's gone to the States now. You know, he got attacked by the Russians and saw, saw the lights. Blinded by the light. As Nikita and Ivan smacked him up. Yeah. And uh, he, I think he's got a... Does he bring a... Yeah, he brings a, brings a US flag in. And he got beaten up so badly, he's still wearing a neck brace. I thought it was going to be one of those big floppy neck braces like Bobby Heathen used to wear. But no, it's like a sort of um, a little one round the neck with a, with, a, with, a, with a bit of a rope here, a string here. It doesn't really protect the neck. It's a bit weird. But anyway, he's fighting Joel Deaton, and you know he's going to win, don't you? Um, I mean, Canoda's popular with his you know, US flag and his neck brace. Who, who, who wouldn't want a man with a US flag and a neck brace? Who wouldn't? Anyway, he wrestles with that neck brace, as I say. He gets an arm lock, a slam, an abdominal stretch, and then a pull down from the abdominal stretch and tries a cover from that. You're not going to get a cover from that, mate, even with Joel Deaton. So you got an arm drag from, from Canoodle, Canoodle. And a fireman's carry takeover. Oh dear. Then a poor clothesline and a standing power slam for the pin. And I'd rather not have been watching it, to be honest. But here comes JJ Dillon. Now, um, he's got his wanted posters. And he says that the ultimate bounty hunter, you know, because he's been saying he's offering money. The ultimate bounty hunter has stepped forward. And he wants to show us who that will be. Who is it? Well, he's on the Double Cross Ranch, folks. It's Terry Funk. Now, they haven't queued up his promo. So you get Terry Funk. And then Dylan has to wait and he just looks at his looks at his posters and pursed his lips as if to say, that's not really very good. 
So, yes, he's talking about how he's... Um, the music's too loud, by the way, to begin with. I mean, for the first couple of minutes, too loud. And then he's going to kill Slater by, professionally by humiliation. OK, here's our lunch bus, Tyler, shouting, bending over towards the camera. Talks about a shirt that the fans gave him, and he's delighted with the shirt. And he's going to leave the shirt with Don Coddle to look after. I wonder what will happen. This is wrestling, remember? So, yes, it's um, it's Buzz Tyler versus Bill Alexander. Now, Alexander can't put him down. Tyler hits a slam. Here comes somebody shouting to Bob Coddle at the podium, the Geneva of wrestling. Um, good Gordon Soli impression that tonight. It's Black Bart. Takes Buzz Tyler's screen-printed shirt and rips it. Coddle's quite good. He goes, hey, I'm supposed to be looking after that. I think he's worried about what Buzz Tyler might do to him. So there is a, a, an elbow drop from Tyler for a one for one point five count. Actually, it's a bit weird. And then a clothesline for the pin. It wasn't particularly good. And he goes in search of Bart. Who did this? It was Black Bart, not me. <laughs> sort of thing. And he rushes off immediately in search of him. Yeah. Then we've got Coddle, who be who tells us it'll be Billy Graham after the break. But what we see is a picture of Magnum T A. Just like it was for the last break. Here's Graham and Paul Jones. See, I like I like number one Paul Jones. He's always got a seventies tuxedo on, even in eighty five, and it's and it's it's powder. It's baby pink, not powder blue. Baby pink. I like it. You know, Paul Jones talks him up while he flexes, and then Graham says he's the master of kung fu, jiu jitsu, uh, the uh, um, taekwondo, high tai, low tai, muay thai. Sounds like your tie. My tie, knitted tie. It's a bit weird. And and, we'll, and, and here he is. And when he, he does that thing where he, he, he's facing Sam Houston, but he that thing where he comes in and goes, ah, 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 ah. that's not kung fu, jujitsu, low tie, high tie, your tie, my tie, taekwondo, or anything. It's terrible. At least do a little bit of research before you do it, before you... Before you're playing this kind of character, he looks like Elvis. You know, Fat Elvis in the Aloha thing. He looks like that. Anyway, out comes Dusty. And he's got, I mean, they have to cut to him because it's Dusty. And he's got a, a, a trolley with several sacks of nickels. 10,000, not nickels, silver dollars. 10,000 silver dollars. He's got 10,000 of them and he wants to fight Tully on his rules. I don't know what his rules are. I don't know whether it's a hamburger on a pole match. I've no idea. But um, back in the ring, because, you know, the, the match has had to kind of take second second place to Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes! And, um, yeah, Houston fights, but he's put down by, by Graham, who then chokes him. There's a backbreaker over the shoulder. Um, and then I kind of reverse snake eyes, which I quite like, actually. And then he's full Nelson for the for the pin. No one can break it, folks. Listen, anyone can break it because he hasn't yet. And I've seen it four times now. He hasn't yet clasped the hands together so anyone can get out of it. OK, more Magnum TA before we get Ron, Ron Bass, uh, who's the Mid-Atlantic heavyweight champ, as I said. He is a teacher now, apparently, and he can hurt the best of them. Class is in session. Ow! And he said that JJ's got his back covered before we see Magnum TA again. Buzz is upset about his shirt going because, you know, fans gave it to him. It didn't look a particularly well-made shirt. I don't think it was that expensive. He wants Bart. Usual anger. Says he'll think about Bart all the time. The usual thing. I'll think about Bart when I wake up. I'll think about him when I'm going to bed. I'll think about him when I'm having a shit... That sort of thing, you know. Um, anyway, the Barbarian is facing Tommy Lane. Barbarian bear hug, which Lane sells very nicely. Elbow to the Barbarian to get to get out of there. He runs him into the ring post as the Barbarian. Diving headbutt, headbutt off the top. There you go. People are enjoying the Barbarian. But the thing is, I've I've seen him many, many times, so I'm not too bothered. I make my tash stand up. You see, look at that. It's a bit. It's a bit weird today. It's not been. It's not been behaving that well. More like it, isn't it? No, it's sticking out. Look. Anyway, 
Back to these matches, such as they are. Here's um, Magnum TA, because we've not seen him, have we, during this during this hour at all. With Manny Fernandez, Manny and Dusty are tag team champs. Surprised Dusty's not back with his 10,000 silver dollars. And Magnum wants Wahoo. He's already told us that. Now, Fernandez says that the Russians will be shipped out to their mother country. They're not, they're not Russian. But anyway, you know, there's that Cold War thing going on in there. Now, this is quite good, actually, because you know that, um, that Funk's after Slater. Well, he's in there in, in a rather expensive looking leather coat, full length leather coat, saying that actually he's a bit frightened of this. It's quite good, actually, that that he does see, you know, he doesn't just do the, yeah, yeah, he can come and do whatever he wants. I'm ready for him. I says, actually, I'm a bit frightened. It's a good angry promo, but I like that. Really like that. Now, we finish. Oh, no, we don't. We've got, we've got a match to go. But this is Tully Blanchard in the limo going to meet somebody off a private jet. He seems to have driven five yards since we saw him in the first place. He waits for the plane. Out comes the, the woman who will become Baby Doll. Got a problem with that as well, of course. She doesn't look sophisticated. Let's put. She's chewing gum. She's wearing leathers. She doesn't really fit with Tully Blanchard's kind of sports coat and slacks kind of look. They do kiss, and she seems quite up for it. They get in the back of the limo, and really, I mean, they're lip locking, and and you know, quite a long time. It's a bit sort of, get a room. Uh, oh, you will do. Okay, right. She's supposed to be the perfect 10. Now, I don't know what his criteria was, but she doesn't really seem like the kind of person, considering he's supposed to be sophisticated and all champagned up and all that. It doesn't seem like that's the kind of thing that he would like. But anyway, they say opposites attract, don't they? Now, back in the room, we've got the Russians versus Mike Davis and Frank Lang. This is the first time they'll talk about the Russian hammer and the Russian sickle. Immediate attack from the Russians, double back elbow. Nikita gets two back breakers and then curl, and, and, you know, between them, he curls him like a sort of, like he's doing his bicep curls. And then there's just a push down off the ropes um, with the Russian hammer to end it. That's the clothesline. The Russian sickle is the one at the back, of course, for the pin. And we finish with Wahoo. Showing us that he's attacked Ric Flair. So we see some footage. We've seen it before, folks. We saw it a few weeks ago. It's nothing new. That's not the way to end your show. Why didn't you end it with the perfect 10? You started it with the perfect 10. Why don't you end it with that? Instead, you've got Wahoo saying, look, I beat Ric Flair up. Yeah, I know we saw it. Oh, right. Well, I beat him up, you know. Yeah, I, I know. Did I tell you I beat him up? Yes, yes, you told me. I've seen it as well. Don't don't show it to me again. Oh, you are doing. Finish it with the perfect 10. Even if it's not what I wanted, a lot of people will want it because you started it with that. Stereo it. Bookend it. Gosh, I should be some kind of producer, me. It's, a, it's not a good episode. It's the Major League of Professional Wrestling, apparently. Well, if this is the Major Leagues, then I don't know what the minor leagues are. Probably Mid-South, which I'm watching from the same time. And that's pretty blooming good. But this isn't. Ta-ta.